Why is China so advanced in technology? A country with a 1.398 billion population, the largest in the world. So before starting, please like this video and subscribe to this channel for our future updates. So let's start. What is technology? Technology means by which we apply our understanding of the natural world to the solution of practical problems. It is a combination of hardware and software with the usage of minds. Technology has a great influence on individuals, businesses, society, and nature. Advances that occur in technology have a major influence on creating national and individual wealth and on improving people's standard of living and quality of life. Purpose of Technology Technology represents the combination of human understanding of natural laws and phenomena accumulated since ancient times to make things that fulfill our needs and desires or that perform certain functions. In other words, technology has to create things that benefit human beings. History of China in Technology In 1820, China had a GDP per capita which accounted for around 40% of the United States GDP per capita. Since then, this figure declined to its lowest point in 1950, which was around 5% of the USA standard. From 1950 onwards, the indicators stopped declining, with a slow improvement of relative stagnation for the first period between 1950 and the 1970s, and rapid improvement since the end of the 1970s, corresponding to the respective centrally planned and market reform periods. From the 1990s onward, a private economy emerged in China, and this key structural change both heralded more avenues for successful technology transfer and concomitantly heightened the likelihood of policy success. Not surprisingly, the concerns of the literature on technology transfer have transformed as well in order to try to keep pace with the dramatic changes in China's economy and technology. Why China is so advanced in technology, reasons about it. Number 1. Self-development. One of the outstanding features in China's technology was the concept of self-design and self-development, which became important as the core of technological development and innovation since the establishment of PR China. For example, the atomic bomb and the rocket were successfully developed and launched and still remain the strength of China's R&D. Number 2. Small Industries. In 1820, China had a GDP per capita which accounted for around 40% of the United States GDP per capita. Since then, this figure declined to its lowest point in 1950, which was around 5% of the USA standard. They started small industries and companies at the level of the houses and improved their GDP. Number 3. Planning and Actions. From 1950 onwards, the indicators stopped declining, with the slow improvement of relative stagnation for the first period between 1950 and the 1970s, and rapid improvement since the end of the 1970s, corresponding to the respective centrally planned and market reform periods. Due to their continued struggle, determination, and potential in studies. Number 4. 1985 Policy. In May 1995, the government announced a CCP Central Committee decision to accelerate the development of science and technology, where the fundamental principles established by the 1985 policy decision were reaffirmed. In addition, the new decision underscored the importance of a few new elements that had emerged during the past 10 years of reform. Number 5. Made in China. Examples not only from the Soviet Union model, but also the Manhattan Project, the Apollo Project, and the Star Wars Project are proof that, to some extent, innovations or technological progress can be planned, provided that there is firm determination from stakeholders and sufficient resources. China is currently running many Apollo-like projects, such as the 863 program, the 973 programs, and the 13th five-year plan. Most of these projects are targeted at catching up in strategic and selected industries, such as those identified in the Made in China 2025 strategy. Number 6. High Investments and Benefits The supply chains of various industries, consisting of thousands of component technology suppliers, are now clustered in the country due to their huge population of 1.398 billion people. China's internal market, now with 1.4 billion consume which is too good and high. Number 7. The Backbone of China Technology, Education The Chinese tradition of emphasizing education is also crucially important for its technological rise. Besides the government spending 20% of its budget on education, Chinese households also invest heavily, 
reaching levels equivalent to 50% of the government's education budgets and a per capita income of $8,000 plus in nominal US dollars and $15,000 plus in PPP US dollars, is also a blessing to innovation in many ways. Number 8. 3D Concept. The Chinese government, therefore, developed a three-pronged plan to contain foreign companies and enable its companies to create advanced technologies. 1. The state has ensured that it will be both buyer and seller in certain key industries, by retaining ownership of customers and suppliers alike. For instance, the Chinese government owns CSR and China Railways, AVIC, and China Eastern Airlines. This gives the state a great deal of influence over equipment purchases, sales, and technology development. 2. The government has consolidated several manufacturers into a few national champions, to generate economies of scale and concentrate learning. CSR and AVIC both resulted from the mergers of several smaller, loss-making enterprises. 3. Chinese officials have learned to tackle multinational companies, often forcing them to form joint ventures with their national champions and transfer the latest technology in exchange for current and future business opportunities. Companies that resist are simply excluded from projects. Number 9. Timing is critical. The government is convinced that Chinese companies must acquire the latest technologies and invest in R&D immediately if they don't want to miss the local and global infrastructure building booms now underway. Number 10. On the right target. The Chinese government sometimes synchronizes its desire to accelerate growth in a particular sector with the imposition of new regulations on multinationals in that sector. For example, from 1996 to 2005 foreign companies held a 75% share of the Chinese market for wind energy projects. Then the government decided to grow the market dramatically, offering buyers large new subsidies and other incentives. Number 11. Nuclear power generation. China's installed operational nuclear capacity has reached nearly 50 gigawatts, GW, trailing only the United States and France. With an additional 9.3 gigawatts of nuclear capacity under construction and much more under planning, China is projected to become the world's largest nuclear power generating country by 2030. Number 12. Multi-directional approaches. China has invested heavily in supercritical and ultra-supercritical generation assets to replace less efficient ones, although even these more efficient plants raise carbon emission concerns. As a result of these new investments, China's coal power generation fleet has become one of the most efficient in the world, surpassing that of the United States and the European Union EU. Number 13. Gas Developments. China is expanding its natural gas network, constructing combined cycle natural gas power plants, liquefied natural gas LNG, regasification terminals, and import pipelines, and expanding its gas distribution network to service its industry, residential, including for heat transport, and power sectors. Number 14. The Circuits of Infinite Trains. Since 2008, China has put into operation over 25,000 kilometers of dedicated high-speed railway lines, far more than the total high-speed lines operating in the rest of the world. This new electrified system is technologically comparable to the world's most advanced high-speed rail systems, such as the TGV in France and the Shinkansen in Japan. Number 15. Research Establishments. China has also increased funding for energy-related research, development, and deployment RD&D, including in clean alternatives, and it is projected to soon surpass the United States as the top investor in public sector RD&D. It is looking to promote technological advancements across an expanding range of energy areas. What do you think of our list? Which thing do you like from the above list? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoy this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.